It's a tough act to follow. And on my way here, I came past a kindergarten, two hospitals that I counted, and a cooperative bank. Do you know who created them? Business? Government? Nope. They were pioneered by a group of people we've come to call over the last 30 years social entrepreneurs. Kinder modern kindergartens owe everything to Maria Montessori. Hospitals, unthinkable without the profession of nursing that was invented by Florence Nightingale. Cooperative banks were started 150 years ago, not very far from here, by Friedrich Wilhelm Reifeisen, who saw poor farmers on the side of the road and decided to help them insure each other, and today it's a vast movement. The history of these great social innovations is not over. In fact, it's accelerating. Many of these ideas that could grow to the same size are being born somewhere around the world as we speak. And today, I'd like to talk to you about how you can be a part of them. Because I believe that maybe there's never been a time when, we've been, when there's been as many people with as much time, as good health, as good education, as well networked, as well connected to each other, and as mobile as ever before. In fact, I believe that for the first time, every one of us can make a difference not only to the people around them, their community, but potentially to the lives of millions. All right, that sounds big, that sounds daunting. It actually kind of feels like a burden, doesn't it? So who am I to be one of those? I'm not a great social entrepreneur like Raul Krauthausen or 3,000 of the other leading social entrepreneurs in the Ashoka Network. And every one of us has probably thought who am I to make the contribution to the world? And many of you have probably tried different things. Now, when I started as a teenager, I grew up believing in institutions, top-down. If you want to improve the lives of millions, you go into policy-making. I went into party politics. Wasn't for me. Then, in the late 1990s, there was the dot-com boom on. And I thought that was the big thing. So I tried for a few years starting a social network, still exists, being an internet entrepreneur, didn't last long. So I went into city life, into management consulting. Again, didn't last very long. I'm not going to bore you with that biography because over the last 10 years, it's nothing, it's no, it's nothing particularly special. Many of us have tried things. But over the last 10 years, I have seen the world through a slightly different lens, through the lens of thousands of citizens I had the pleasure of working with in citizen participation and hundreds of the world's leading social entrepreneurs in the Ashoka network. And very slowly and gradually, I almost haven't noticed it, my lens on the world, the way I looked at the world, has been shifting. And it was only last year or two years ago that something occurred to me in the way I saw the world. And that's what I want to share with you, this pattern. These are market phenomena that we read about in the business media. In fact, many of them have dominated the business press. We couldn't quite figure out how do they grow, where do they come from. These are multi-billion dollar markets now that are still growing by double digit every year, di digits every year. 35 billion in open education. It was unthinkable only 10 years ago. 50, 47 billion in green energy. And I've got to tell you a story about that in a moment. 62 billion in organic and slow food. And here's the really big one, 600 billion in mobile banking. Now, these are markets that we already know about. And typically we think of these market innovations as S-curves. So something starts small without much productivity gains and then it takes off as something happens. And these markets we can see, they're fairly far up the S-curve. We're already noticing them. They're around now really in fast growth mode. But when you trace them back to their origin, to the thing that happened at the beginning that made them possible, I started to begin something very familiar. These are organizations that we have supported 
five, 10, 15, and sometimes 20 years ago. They're the organizations of leading social entrepreneurs. You can see the logo of Wikipedia here. Wikipedia has started what is now a knowledge revolution that leads to, the, uh, uh, to another revolution in online and open learning. WISIT is one of the first organizations in South Africa to, to start mobile banking more than 10 years ago. Now, mobile banking dominates the banking world. Kiva is a place also started by a leading social entrepreneur, um, uh, Matt Flannery, that allows everyone here to give credit to everybody. Couchsurfing led to Airbnb. Fair trade was started by a social entrepreneur. The University of the People allows everyone to gain a degree online. And the Elektrizitätswerke Schönau here from Germany, they have 20 years ago demonstrated, provided the blueprint that every citizen could feed in green energy to the grid. Recognize it, it's now the basic mechanism for one of the biggest industrial transformations of our time. What I want to say is social entrepreneurs are the invisible and often surprising force at the beginning of some of the largest trans market transformations of our time. And we did a lot of research on this and we found three core mechanisms that these new market phenomena share. Everyone a value creator. In all of these markets, the role of the customer is no longer the primary role in which people see each other. There's no longer one producer and one customer. Many more roles, the one of the co-creator, the co-owner, um, uh, you know, everyone's a knowledge writer now. Everyone so many roles. Secondly, markets for more than the self. You know, looking beyond your belly button and seeing the growth of everybody in this market. In fact, it's a strategy of most of the social entrepreneurs at the beginning of that S-curve. Again, think of Wikipedia. They're giving away their technology. They're making the market bigger for everybody. That's behavior you don't really learn in business schools, and it's the same for all of these markets. They do something you wouldn't normally do when you have a growing market in front of you. They give away everything, everything so that everyone can, uh, can participate in this market and can benefit from it, including financially. Which brings me to the third feature. These are markets that exist. These are organizations, mechanisms that exist not in this old silo of either for-profit or not-for-profit. They exist in between. Think of it this way. Over here is minus 100% return. You could call it a donation or a subsidy. You're not absolutely not getting your money back, none of it. And over here is investments. You're trying to get as much as you can back. Most of us are hardwired almost to think in this binary way. We behave either the one way or the other way. In the daytime this way, evening the other way. Most of the exciting stuff is actually in the middle. Most of the exciting stuff that had these markets grow and take off was in the middle. And we've now started a financing agency that finances stuff in this middle. Now the most important thing though about these markets, and you may already have noticed it, is the tremendous acceleration. I talked about Montessori, Nightingale, and Raiffeisen. Now, social innovations have always led to market phenomena, but they, take, they took decades and decades. Now, this happens in the space of only a few years, and that completely changes the game. Let me give you an example. Let's pick an industry that's not particularly well known for wanting to change the world for the better. Let's take banking. Right? So we already had Raiffeisen. Before Raiffeisen's time, out of this room, two people would have been banking customers. All the rest of you would never have considered walking into a bank. Now Raiffeisen made about 10 of you, rural farmers, 20 of you, when you look at the world's population, um, banking clients. Fast forward a few decades and Sparkas and savings banks do the same in the inner city. Fast forward another few decades and Microcredit conquers uh, communities of women in the developing world. Okay, so more of you are part of that now. More and more people are becoming part of it. Then comes uh, mobile banking, and it wasn't invented by the banks. Mobile banking was invented by social entrepreneurs wanting to connect micro-entrepreneurs who were far away and would never have walked into a bank branch. 
Now that now takes about, makes about half of this room uh, representative for the world citizenry banking customers. Banks didn't drive it. Now what happens next? What happens next is peer-to-peer -peer banking. It makes everyone a producer of credit. And we can already see um, what's next on the platform. If we see what are the next big innovations that will include ever more people and make ever more people active participants, active economic participants. There are social entrepreneurs who are looking at inner city predatory lending and change that, empowering people to take charge of their own finances. Uh, social entrepreneurs uh, who are trying to make uh, children economically responsible because a quarter of the world's children are economically active. And you can see the mechanism here. So you had Raiffeisen goes very slowly, then it takes off, then it takes off, and innovation after innovation. Peer-to-peer -peer credit, Kiva, is less than 10 years old, and it's threatening the very business of banks. This happens within a few years now. All of you are now active economic participants in this game. Question is no longer are you walking into, do you have the guts to walk into a banking branch, but how are you part of changing this industry? If it was up to me, I wouldn't send my kid to become a banker nowadays. I don't think it's, there, you know, if, if I believe this curve, there isn't really that much happening there. Okay, so you see the pattern. This is the pattern through which I feel we're now increasingly seeing the world. The more and more people participate in more and more roles, the more quickly social solutions grow. That's very different to how I uh, understood markets growing up. It's very different to how I understood, understood the role of government growing up. And I feel it will fundamentally change the idea of where people will go to, which job they will take, which field they will take as their, for their career if they want to have a big impact on the world. When I made that career choice, that first career choice 20 years ago, social entrepreneurship wasn't on the map. Now it really is, and this is why. And you can see why social entrepreneurs are so good at playing this game. Because it's not about attracting capital, it's about attracting change makers. It's about attracting people as active participants in your cause. Of course, if you have a great cause that people believe in, you're going to be much better at it. No money in the world can buy the participation of, the, of, of everyone as a knowledge writer on Wikipedia. Absolutely impossible to buy it. So I think, I think this is the re new reality, the new game we live in, and it completely challenges everything we thought about growth. It actually doesn't, if you look at the history of these innovations, they didn't happen in in one organization. It's not that one organization captured all the value in the market and grew as big as possible. No, they shared it. They made it open as much as possible. This is a game that traditional business cannot play, but will have to learn to play if they want to play in these types of markets. Now, what does that mean for everyone's choice as a change maker? When I made that those career choices, I thought that my primary role in this world as a change maker was defined through my job. I think my parents certainly feel they have a day job thing to do, then they engage in a few social activities, they donate a little bit, and they are generally responsible citizens. Now we have so many more options. Every one of us can be a co-creator, a co-founder of a new social venture. Every one of us can be the co-owner of uh, a community infrastructure. Every one of us now, through innovations like Kiva, Better Place, and so many others, can be a social investor. And not either here on the donation end or over here at the maximum investment end, but in the smart space in between. It's a completely different way to think about your money. And perhaps the most important role as a change maker is for me that as a father. I've got two kids. I'm not going to show you pictures of them. They should look at that themselves, you know, they should decide for themselves. But I wonder what is, if I believe this growth curve, if I believe this, cu this curve of innovation, this faster, this faster pace of innovation, what will be their literacy? What will define their literacy? In the age of Montessori, Nightingale, and Raiffeisen, Literacy was about reading and writing. Not everybody could do that, but if you wanted to play in the world, you had to. Now, 
Change-making, I believe, is that literacy, the ability to see problems, to empathetically connect to your surrounding, and then have the courage, the self-permission to act and be part of it, not for your own good, but for everybody. And I believe that is increasingly defining competition. Now, the city here knows it has to compete for new businesses. It will build roads, it will, give an, it will start an industrial park, it will uh, uh, start a University of Applied Sciences. A city, a business, everyone knows what it takes to become competitive, to be competitive nowadays, to attract capital. I believe that's completely the old game. The new game is about attracting change makers, being a place that attracts people who want to change the world together. That will be the new competition. What will a city look like that attracts as many change makers as possible? That will be a place where these types of markets grow very quickly and they will grow for the good of all. So the scarce resource I realize in this world, and that's how I changed my lens on the world, by working with all these social entrepreneurs, the scarce resource in this world is only one thing. It's you. Thank you.